sorry, I was a bit disturbed by the metallic voice of the of the platform. <laughs> So uh, one more thank you goes obviously to all those who had the chance to attend our past webinar of the Houseful series in March on the topic of uh, energy and water. And today we'll be speaking about waste, but I have, still have a good news for those who might have missed the past webinars because they're finally available on the Houseful Project YouTube page so you can retrieve and watch them again as you'll be able with this one later on but I will give you further details later. So before probably like kicking off with this webinar uh, I would like still to give a couple of minutes to the latecomers to give them the chance to get connected and take the uh, advantage of this extra time to give you a couple of, of more technical details on the platforms that we're now using. I don't know how familiar you're with it. It's called GoToWebinar. Main thing that I'd like to tell you is, first of all, I apologize with those who might have attended the past webinar because it might sound a bit redundant to them, but we do care to create the best possible condition to uh, allow everybody to fully participate to this webinar and to ask her or his question uh, through this platform. And to do that, you just have to click on the small and icon that you should find on the top left corner of your dialog box on the right side of your screen and then type your question in the chat box below. So for uh, our social media manager, Sarah, that I already thanked a lot for outstanding support during this webinar and its technical rehearsal, to submit them to us and for our panelists to answer them. So now, according to my computer, is 3.04 p.m. Central European time. Let's say we can probably get started with this uh, webinar, houseful webinar. Before doing that, I just ask you all to take a pen and check if it writes, because I promise you that it, it will be worth taking notes, what we will speaking about, because it's going to be very, very interesting. So let's get started with this Houseful webinar, which is uh, co-hosted and co-produced by Icons Innovation Strategies, the Italian uh, foundation I work for, which is in charge, among other things, of its dissemination activities. The Houseful project, for most of you, will need no uh, introduction, but it's worth at least to recall that it is an European project aimed at fostering a circular approach to the housing sector. And this project is going is coming to an end in the next few weeks. This is why the timing is perfect to make a point on its achievements uh, during its long and very passionate journey. And this is also why from Israel, Natania, we have joining us Julia Chudnovsky. Uh, did I pronounce it well? Yeah, thank you. And Yair Teller, this is easier. Hi, Yair. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Julia, Julia and Yair are respectively a Carbon and Sustainable Officer, Julia, right? and co-founder of uh concerning yeah here of one of houseful technical partners home biogas which is an israeli company with the let me say very ambitious goal of helping and empowering people if i may say so uh, making our planet a more sustainable and better place to live by turning waste into resources so it sounds very good. And uh, the first, let's say, ice-breaking question, just to frame the topic we'll be discussing today is for Yair as a co-founder, how did you come to this idea? So what was the urgency? Wow, this is a, a good question. Um, I think I, I'm a water biologist. So when I was uh, learning uh, water biology, I learned about the problems of uh, water contamination, how the water is contaminated from uh, animal waste, human waste, and, and, and organic waste. And one time when I was uh, traveling in, the, in the Southeast India, I, I met a local family 
that was uh, making uh, cooking and instead of uh, cow manure and smoke was cooking on uh, gas. And I asked them, how do you have this gas in the house? Because everybody's cooking on cow shit. And uh, they said to me, we'll show you. And they brought me, they showed me the, in the back, they had some cows. And the uh, Indian uh, local farmer said to me, I, in the end of the day, I washed the cow manure into this hole in the ground and gas is coming out and mm -hmm. going into the kitchen and we cook on it. And I look at it and I say, wow, this is amazing. He's stopping the contamination of the water, catching the animal waste, producing the gas, clean gas, instead of cooking and smoke and cutting down the trees and animal waste and, you know, all of the problems of cooking and, and wood and, and having smoke in the house, indoor pollution that kills millions. And the most important thing is said to me, I have all, all the liquid fertilizer, and this is what we're going to talk about today, goes out and I give it uh, to the coffee plantation to grow vegetables and to grow color flowers, beautiful white flowers. Mm -hmm. And I sell it in the weekend market. So I look at it and say, wow, he also has revenue. He's also yeah. stopping a uh, contamination, also has revenue and also renewable energy. But the only thing is, I said, this is what I want to do in the world. I want, and then he came back to continue studying, and and then we started the home biogas. The only so thing that, is that, that, that this technology was a, a very, very old technology that you need to dig underneath the ground and put it with cement and bricks, and it took a month. And if the earth moves and shakes, it breaks. So please and don't spoil too much. Out. Don't spoil too much because I guess we'll be speaking of these like a bit more in details later on. But uh, I know yeah. the story, and I guess that uh, it, I mean it's very strictly related to this one of the solution you developed later on, and we'll see it yes. later. But that was very interesting to see how like ancient traditions like can be useful today. So I would yes. like now. Give the to give the floor to Julia, uh, who'll be, uh, I guess, not only giving us some more details on the household project, but also remind us, probably correct me if I'm wrong, that in the current context of the energy crisis, uh, let's say going circular has also huge financial benefits, right, Julia? Yes, definitely. We need to reach a, a circular economy to upcycle our resources in order to be more sustainable and have a different future for our and for the next generation as well. I guess your presentation might be helpful to dig a bit more mm -hmm. into these kind of topics. You can probably launch it. Okay, perfect. Let me start. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Not yet in full screen mode, but we already said. Okay, now in full screen. Yes, oh, perfect. Sorry. Okay, perfect. Okay, so my name is Julia, as Diego said, I'm the sustainability and carbon officer at Home Biogas. And we'll be talking about how to take the organic waste, turn it into renewable energy, and to, in the meanwhile, to stop greenhouse gases emission. Uh, so we'll start talking about the household projects, some global challenges, some uh, how to implement new technologies, and we will talk about how home biogas is integrated into the household project. So Houseful is a program that belongs to Horizon 2020. It has the objective to shift toward a circular economy in the housing sector. It uh, developed a, a 11 solutions with a that were co-created with stakeholders, stakeholders as home biogas, and they had the objective to manage and efficiently use water, waste, energy, and materials. We at Home Biogas, we are in the waste part. So now we will talk about some problems that the EU has, but in general there are, there are global problems as the energy crisis, as you may all know, because your energy bills got much higher, the war between Russia and Ukraine uh, increased the prices and they, they nearly doubled in the last year. We also have a problem with food waste. Food waste is a major problem all over the world. The EU only 
uh, produces 150 million tons of food waste each year. And from all of the food that is produced in the EU, 20% of it goes directly to the trash bin. So, so, sorry for this... stepping in. Sorry for stepping in, but uh, I'd yes. like just to recall some more figures about that because it's quite striking, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, according to a, a recent report of the European Environmental a a Agency, each European citizen, for each European citizen, every year some over 170 kilograms of waste of food gets wow. wasted so it's huge it makes overall something around 90 million tons so i think these figures That's should massive. make it paying something because if on one hand it means that tell me if you agree with me on the one hand it means that a lot has still to be done to reduce this waste on the other hand, if we embrace a circular approach, it also means, and this is what we're focus on, focusing on today, that a lot of resources are already available, right? Yes, I agree completely. We need to reduce the waste and to recycle it at the same time. We will be discussing this later on. But the, the numbers are massive, and I agree that it's very surprising the amount of waste that we are producing in the world. And there is no real trash bin in the world, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, all of this waste can be turned into resources, if not all of it, but, I mean, a good part of it. So it means resources okay. are there. Yes, I will only uh, say something else, that once we uh, separate all of the organic waste, the rest is dry, so it's much easier to recycle all of the paper and glass and um, plastic. The plastic and everything that is uh, left. So from all of the waste that arrives into the landfills, 50% of it is organic waste and 20% of it goes directly to landfills and 27% of it is incinerated. It's important to remember that all of this uh, food waste that we transported from one place to another, it's moved by trucks, and all of these trucks also pollute CO2. Um, Good point. And as I, hmm? Good point. <laughs> yes, and as I said, all of these food waste that arrive to landfills, they produce methane emissions. Methane is the second most important greenhouse gas contributor to climate change. Uh, it's, it has a warming potential that is much higher than CO2. However, it stays in the atmosphere less time. This is why um, when we are talking about methane, we say that it's 20 times more uh, pollutant than CO2 when we are talking about in a scale of 100 years. But when we look at it at a scale of 20 years, it's 84 times more pollutant than CO2. So methane gas is a, it's a gas to address when we're talking about achieving our climate objectives. Sure. Another topic is food security. Uh, as I previously explained, um, the gas prices went up. Uh, uh, food security is highly dependent on fertilizers, and fertil the fertilizer production uh, requires a lot of gas. So if the gas prices went up, the fertilizers went up, and people, the people are suffering from the food increase prices. Uh, so it's also something to address. People need to be uh, undependent and uh, autosustainable on their food production and energy production. So this brings us to looking at the economy in, the, in a different way. We want to move from a linear economy into a circular economy. Uh, this means to prevent the waste of resources and as well to have a waste-free world. And we will be focusing on reducing, reusing and recycling. Um, in the linear economy, the main thing is the costs and the prices and we want to move from it into a circular economy where we are also looking into the social and the environmental impact that we have on the world because if we want to keep living in this beautiful world we need to take care of it and even because it is a limited space i mean our yes. resources are depletable mm -hmm. 
agreed, limited spacing with limited resources. So we, there is a place to implement new technologies. And when we are talking about the implementation of new technologies, we need to talk about the Paris Agreement. In COP15, the Paris, uh, the Paris Agreement was launched. And since then, every other COP uh, meeting uh, discussed new guidelines and new um, objectives for international uh, climate for an international uh, climate and uh, goals such as uh, keep uh, the global average temperature below two celsius degrees in comparison with the pre-industrial levels we are also talking globally about being net zero carbon in 2050 and for that to happen we need to take drastic measures until 2030. And this is the place where com companies like Home Biogas come into place. Uh, Home Biogas is the world leader in organic waste management, um, organic waste management. So we have these solutions where uh, we treat sustainably the organic waste and we turn it into renewable energy. We are present in more than 100 countries. Uh, in 60 continents, and we have over 30,000 customers around the world. Last year only, we we won many uh, sustainability awards, including the World Sustainability Award and the Times Award. So what Home Biogas does is taking all of this food waste, turning it into renewable energy, and in the meanwhile, we are solving some of the world's biggest challenges of the climate challenge and the pollution and waste uh, crisis. Here are the systems that Home Biogas uh, has. We are focused in three main markets, the household markets, the farmers and the commercial. Um, all the three of them have the common uh, features of being easy to scale up being easy to scale up is something crucial, crucial, especially for the household projects and in a global term, because we need to achieve as many places as possible to really be able to make a change. The home biogas system have international patents, are ISO and CE certified. They're very user friendly. They are easy to install and simple to maintain. For example, the farmer systems can be installed in, Arden in under two hours. And all of the systems save removal, transportation, and landfill costs. Just a question about that before yes. getting into the details of your solution, because it's quite uh, intriguing, like from a from a from a perspective of the of a client i mean who are the main targets of your company i mean who's benefiting from these kind of solutions okay that's a great question so we have four main uh, target customers in the household part it's divided into two we have uh, people who are conscious about the environment and they have the systems in order to be also sustainable in their energy used for cooking and we have a, a huge part that is sanitation our systems can be also connected to toilets so we are solving another global crisis that is the sanitation crisis and the lack uh, of connection to a sewage system in the farmers part we are divided also into two so we have all of these uh, African and Asian uh, farmers that they are now uh, cutting down trees and they are polluting their waters at the Aegis end uh, from the animal manure. Uh, so they replace all of this with our system. And we have the farmers in Latin America that the fertilizer prices, and yeah, you will talk about it later, but the fertilizer prices went up and all of these Latin Americans are using the systems as a fertilizer machine. And on the commercial side, we have hotels, restaurants, uh, dining rooms, that they are paying a lot of money to uh, for the re for the removal and the transportation of the organic waste, and they use us as an alternative trash bin. <laughs> Let's say it like this. So th this is very interesting what you're saying because it let us understand that at the same time this kind of solution can uh prove to be helpful both in let's say developing countries and in the western world. So. 
there's really a chance to embrace such a circular approach, let's say, all over the world, uh, not only in more most advanced, let's say, countries. Yes, yes agreed. And I also want to emphasize what uh, the the what we did the development the technology development is that we took a system that was uh, very hard to build about a month uh, a lot of infrastructure to dig a big hole in the ground put cement and bricks and now you uh, the system uh, comes in a box as a do-it-yourself kit mm -hmm. with a high quality control and you build it in two hours so this innovation uh, can make the change to be available and affordable to more people across the world. And we see the big impact that it's doing. Yes, we have a huge team of engineers working for it. <laughs> and I think we'll see something more here. Uh, before understanding how the magic works, you can move to the next slide. Uh, I would ask you a question to let, uh, please move to the following slide. Yes. Okay, so we're getting to one of your main solution, but before getting into the details, uh, I, I'd like to ask you a more general question to let our audience uh, probably appreciate what it is about. Because uh, when we think of uh, organic waste, we most of us think of composting. So here we're yeah. speaking of something different different can you please uh, just let for beginners for dummies uh understand <laughs> yeah. what the difference between composting and anaerobic digestion is from both uh the point of view of processes and outcome okay great so uh, on one hand we have compost and another half we have systems digesters like home biogas and composting and uh, and digesters use different type of bacteria. One type of bacteria is uh, consumes air in the production, and another one doesn't. So our bacteria are submerged under water, and the bacteria in the compost they produce something that is called humus, that is a highly concentrated fertilizer. Uh, and on our side, we have two byproducts. We have the gas that is made for cooking and also a liquid fertilizer. Because this is in a liquid uh, ambient, everything that it breaks down, uh, it's, 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 it keeps liquid and uh, we are getting all of the best, like all of the uh, nutrients from the food that uh, we put inside the system. So the outcome are different products, but also the processes mm -hmm. are different because like composting yes. needs air basically, whilst this is anaerobic. So it means without air, right? Yes, and compost, I, I don't want to speak bad about compost, but compost both, requires... Both, uh, both natural processes are uh, different with air, without air. It's the, two ways yes. that nature breaks down organic material and we just take the natural nature's uh, technology uh, that many millions of year old technology and uh, taking it to, for our benefit let's call it like that yes and the, the compost requires like a carbon and nitrogen balance so you always need to add like dry leaves and you need to move it around like it requires a lot of maintenance the compost so let's now try to understand how the magic work even if it's not yes, magic so. but science <laughs> right okay, yes so here I show a picture of the household system because it's a system that we use, we are using in the household project. Uh, what I'm going to explain now is the same concept for all of the systems, only the features change, like how, in, how it's presented. So this system is divided into two chambers. We have the down part that is full of water and where all of the bacteria are. And in the upper part, uh, it's uh, only gas. So the food waste is added through the sink into the digester, into the down part, that it's number two, where all of these bacteria uh, eat the food, they break down all of the food that we added into the digester, and they, we have two byproducts. On one hand, we have the gas that will be used or either for cooking or to heat water, and we have a liquid fertilizer that can be used for gardening or for agriculture, depending on the scenario. So it's quite okay. striking. All this from waste. <laughs> yes, all this from waste, exactly. 
So now we are going to drill down into our part in the household project. So Home Biocast is this company that has been selling digesters for years now. And the household project came to us and said, OK, um, we need to develop a system that will be able to uh, function in colder temperatures. Uh, as I said, uh, the, home, the digesters are biological systems and they require since they have bacteria inside, they function better in warmer temperatures. So we developed all of these features in order to be able to uh, match the European market. Uh, that wasn't a target until the household project. Uh, so we developed an uh, inside uh, heating system that is extremely efficient in energy and uh, also in heating. So it, it goes, it's a submersible heater that comes inside the, the system. And then we have all of these features that retain the heat inside and we avoid heat loss to the, to the atmosphere. So we have a, a digester insulation, a, we have a, a ground insulation, and we have what we call this dome that it actually works like a greenhouse and traps all of the heat inside the digester and also the heat from the sun. So if the sun is up, it's also heating the system. And we have some other features general for the home biogas system as the patented gas pressure mechanism. That means that it doesn't matter what is the pressure of the gas, you will be able to always use uh, the, the stove uh, and uh, use the gas. And we also have an inline gas filter, meaning that all of the gas inside the gas bag is already purified. So I have to say that I had the chance uh, quite recently uh, to mm -hmm. see it and to film it in the Cambium community, which is in Austria Faring. It is one of the houseful projects <laughs> demo site. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an ancient army barrack turned into a kind of an eco village uh, where there are like Exactly. This is where the picture comes from. <laughs> yeah. It looks a bit like an eye glue, let's say. And this is used in like for this community of about 60 people living together and pushing uh, the, uh, let's say, interconnection of, of several circular solutions. So which brings me to the question for you. Uh, I'd like to understand who uh, who is the target for this kind of solution. I mean, uh, who could this kind of solution be a game changer for? I saw it in the context of a community, but uh, who are the usual target for this kind of uh, solution like this one? So I believe that everyone who has a house or, or a garden or any place where they can put the system, I will talk later on that it doesn't need to uh, look in this configuration specifically. This was for the household project and we needed to uh, be uh, in comply and complying with Austrian big biogas systems law. So it doesn't need to have and occupy all of these footprints, all of this space. Uh, so I believe that everyone that has a house, a garden, and in the future as well, uh, I believe that we will be able to connect the commercial systems to buildings, for example, and restaurants, and this already happens, the commercial to restaurants and uh, hotels. Just, I just I have an idea about the quantity <laughs> of biogas produced by this kind of solution. Okay, perfect. So it's of course that it depends on the size of the system. We have different size of systems, but it can be uh, like the household systems from six hours, from two hours to six hours of biogas per day. Wow. <laughs> yes. In, enough so, for cooking. Uh, enough for cooking. It should be. Yes, yeah, he has one of his house and he mainly cooks on biogas. I believe that's only yeah. <laughs> biogas yeah, only. Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so as you can see here, uh, this is a picture, as Diego said, from the from the Cambium community in Faring in Austria. Home Biogas is uh, in charge of solution 7B in demo 3. So this is a picture of how it looks like now on a few months ago. And now we will see a video of the tenants cooking on, uh, on the biogas, making coffee. So it's really used. Yes, and you cannot see the, the flame because it's very blue, but then you can see the coffee coming out. Okay, 
Oh, sorry. Let me... That was a circular coffee. A circular coffee. Bio from... coffee. Bio, Bio coffee. coffee. <laughs> Bio coffee. You're right. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, so here we have a picture, a closer picture from the digester and the dome that we were talking about, this greenhouse. Uh, a picture also from the stove. We gave the tenants some uh, fertilizers and uh, probiotics. Uh, because we had to comply with Austrian laws, uh, we installed this bi um, biofertilizer storage for the winter since everything is free. But I believe that the Cambium community will still use it because they have green uh, greenhouses. And we also added an extra gas bag uh, to accumulate the extra gas. Just for it to be clear for everybody, if you just go back to the to the other yes. slide, the biofertilizer storage here on the right in the right pictures is the storage where the digestate, as a buy side product of mm -hmm. the home biogas uh, anaerobic digester, is connected. And that can be used for uh, vegetable gardens and like uh, for, for nature use. Yes, for irrigation here at the office, we have all of the systems connected to the plants and to the flowers and we have a beautiful garden. <laughs> and here is a picture of uh, the Home Biogas team together with the tenants of the Cambium community after we explain to them how to use the system and how everything works. It was a wonderful experience, I might say. So to summarize some of the benefits, so we have a uh, cooking gas uh, that it's made from renewable energy from your own food scraps. You can also be uh, uh, providing and using it to heat water. It's an option of an add-on. Uh, there is a daily biogas, uh, excuse me, daily fertilizer production. Uh, our customers are reducing their carbon emissions on their footprint, and we are providing sustainability benefits for customers, for the soil, and for the planet that Yair will talk into depth uh, in some minutes. So, any questions? So, let's wait. You, you can go on. We'll, we'll give like room for the question later on. Okay, great. Here are my contacts. If anyone wants to contact me, it's quite easily it's julia at homebiogas.com so we'll recall your contacts later on if there's no if there are no question yet from the audience mm -hmm. i give the floor to yair i see it like close to you he really waits to talk yes but uh before like giving you the floor for your presentation and to let people a bit more frame what it's going to be its topic i'll ask you a more general question which will uh bring us closer closer to the topic of your presentation uh, with the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis related to it, we've been seeing not only our energy bills, but also the fertilizers prices soaring with a huge impact on both agricultural production and prices. So don't you think here that these combined factors, uh, which on the long run uh, might threaten food security should probably remind us that a circular approach is now more urgent than ever. Um, yes, I totally agree with you. And um, also what's important to say is that um, that in this case, uh, of course, uh, it's not good to have the, the war with uh, the Russia and Ukraine and also the COVID that we had. But I think uh, these two things that combined to almost together uh, made uh, the cost of, uh, of uh, chemical fertilizer surge so much and the cost of energy that people understood that they have to take um, to start to, to uh, obtain uh, sustainable technologies uh, to get more self-sufficient, more resilient, and and as you said, a circular economy that actually less uh, uh, less needs to like a linear economy, buy and throw, mm -hmm. but actually reuse what we have the sources in in the farm or in our house to be more self-sufficient or more resilient. And to take the and of course it, it's yeah. a, it's our economy, you know, and also better for the pocket. And for sure, it's good for the planet. Yes, and but, for the soil, we are like 
leaching our soils of minerals with all of this chemical fertilizer. But me as, we are killing me, it. Me as a company, I see also the benefit. You know, the, the biggest mo mo motivator, one of the biggest motivators is, is money. And if you succeed to be, if it's more cheaper and better for the, for the client, it's a big motivator and this is so at least here. at least we're at least we are understanding the urgency of going circular let's say so yes. i think that uh, it's now time to show your presentation here that might help us to get a bit more into the details of this topic thank you can you see the presentation of the biofertilizers okay. we see yours julia okay and now uh nothing changed okay why is that okay now uh nothing yet so far but we're confident that technology will help us to solve yes, this no maybe i'll share my whole screen okay yes it's not in Perfect. full screen mode yet but we already see it that's okay. better that's perfect so okay. i give you the four year here okay amazing so today we'll talk about the, the biofertilizer so as we explained before the biogas system uh inputs organic waste and what comes out is um, biogas and biofertilizer uh, to and this will apply to produce uh, to have a healthier soil and better products so today we'll talk about the challenges uh, the biofertilizer advantages some case studies and questions and answers so as we we talked about in the last uh, in the last few years uh, but uh, there was a, a big surge of the cost of uh, chemical fertilizer um it almost in some places i i was uh, last year in mexico the price of chemical fertilizer went up three times uh, its cost uh, of course i'm also in europe and in the rest of the world why are the reasons for that so to produce a uh, chemical fertilizer you need a lot of energy and this is uh, mostly comes from uh, natural gas wells and also this is a specific very specific countries actually produces chemical uh, fertilizer nitrogen if it's russia uh, iran saudi arabia and a few more countries because you need so much energy it actually takes almost two percent of the energy in the world to produce this uh, nit chemical nitrogen so if the price of energy went up what goes up the price of fertilizer goes up of course, also the supply chain, there's some challenges. As we said, Russia is a big producer and there was some issues uh, with, uh, with providing it with, uh, in Iran and other countries. So the supply chain and of course, transportation cost and issues with transportation because uh, the shipping uh, industry uh, got a big hit in the COVID time and cost of transportation, it went up. And, and all these to all these, these like topics that you've just mentioned, moreover, they're all related because uh, it's probably worth mentioning that uh, two of the main nutrients used for fertilizers are on one hand phosphorus, which is not only a depletable resource uh, on the list of the critical raw materials of the U European Union, uh, which is or more was mainly imported from Russia, but also that uh, another main nutrient is nitrogen, which on the other hand, like nitrogen-based fertilizers, correct me if I'm wrong, they also have a big problem because they are, the production is very energy consuming. So uh, it's, it's also quite a geopolitical problem right now. <laughs> we are very dependent uh the, the the production of chemical fertilizer as you said is very connected to our geopolitical is very dependent on a few countries that produce it so and it's a basic uh, food for for it's a basic uh, nutrient for food growing and we can see that actually we can uh, reduce that this uh, dependency so how we can do this we can use the biofertilizer that comes out from the biogas system. 
Uh, the biofertilizer is actually produced in a natural process when the food waste is broken down in the anaerobic uh, process uh, from the food waste or the animal wood and the animal manure. Uh, the biofertilizer contains actually all that was inside the, the plant, the fruit, let's say the banana peel, the, the potato peel, because what we eat actually is the top of the pyramid of the food chain. So all the nutrients, all the minerals, all the vitamins are there. And this is what the actually plant also uptake from the earth before and, uh, and, and moved it into the fruit, the vegetable or the nut that we consume. So what we throw in into the biogas system is actually the top of the pyramid of, of, uh, of the minerals and the nutrients. This breaks down and dissolves into the liquid. We get there all, a wide range of the macro elements, the micro elements that plant needs, microorganisms, uh, enzymes, biostimulators, and very important, dissolved organic carbon. Um, all of this is very important to understand because organic carbon is very important for the soil structure. And more than that, for the flora around the roots and in the ground, because like we have in our in our stomach, we have probiotics, we have bacteria that are helping us to be healthy and to absorb the nutrients from the food. The same thing is happening around the roots in the plant. And these bacteria and these enzymes need, need actually also to have a good soil and also a good minerals and macro elements to get. And this is what we actually provide. Um, so the, all these available nutrients and minerals uh, for the plant and for the roots, they actually enhance the crop productivity. And when we check uh, all the elements of in the, as we said, in the prop, in the biofertilizer, we, we really get all the micro and macro uh, nutrients that the plant needs is in the uh, biofertilizer. We'll talk a little bit about the law of minimum. What, the, what, does, um, what does it mean, the law of minimum? So, to reach, we'll, we'll use as a, we'll give an example of a bucket of water. Okay, to reach a plant, uh, the plant's full potential. Like a bucket of water, um, we have a bucket of water that is built from pegs. Let's say, uh, uh, and and the pegs, each peg is, resembles a mineral or an element that the plant needs to get to its full potential. If one of the pegs is low, is short then the water will come out and the barrel will not get filled up. The same thing, the plant. It can, you can give it all the NPK, as you said, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. But if one micro element, let's say a vitamin, is not there, then the plant will not succeed to get to its full potential. And this is what's happening in a lot of places around the world. We give a lot of the chemical, main chemical fertilizers, NPK, and we miss a lot of the macro elements and the micronutrients. And this is a, and a lot of times what happens is farmers even give extra uh, micronutrients and actually goes into the groundwater, into the water and it contaminates, or it's actually uh, not healthy and depleting the soil in the ground. But, when we apply the micronutrients and the micronutrients, then the plant with the bacteria around the, the, the roots can absorb better in a more efficient way the micronutrients. And this way we get a, a better a growth of the plant, a healthier plant, and we can use less uh, the chemical uh, fertilizer. I just wanna give an example, what does it mean micronutrients and micronutrients? Let's say for the human body, if we, let's say the NPK is like you eat carbohydrates, fats and sugars, but you also need vitamin A or iron, uh, let's say to have oxygen connecting your blood, you need some, uh, some iron for it. So without this, without this micronutrient, then you'll be very sick uh, and very, and very, you're very sure. sick and you don't have any energy. So the same thing, also the plant. You can give it all the macronutrients, but it will not help without the micronutrients. And this is what the biofertilizer provides. 
So j just let me sum it up to understand if I understood and if probably our audience understood. So basically, no matter how many uh, micronutrients you give to a plant, if there's one element missing, it will never grow as it should. And it could also drive to uh, an excessive use like of fertilizers and thus pollution, right? Yes, it's correct. I actually checked uh, quite a few um, and there's also you can check the testing of the uh, soils and we tested uh, quite a few soils in, in different places for farmers and we see access in the in the ground of phosphorus that the, they don't the, 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 the farmer doesn't need to put more phosphorus there's enough of it the only problem is that there wasn't enough micronutrients to help the plant absorb it the right way that's the issue so when you have the micronutrients and you have the uh, uh, different elements and the flora around the, the, the plant, around the, around the root is healthy, then they absorb it better and consume it better and you have a healthier plant and you need to use less chemical fertilizer. So here on the right, we see a plant, you can see different uh, micro and macro uh, nutrients and a lack of it, what happens to the plant? If you have a lack of each one, um, if the plant, the leaves is yellow, or red, or falling apart, or different sicknesses. So to summarize it, uh, the biofertilizer helps to build a healthier soil structure uh, with a more organic material. There's a better humidity retention in the soil, humidity retention, uh, nutrient retention, and a healthier bioflora around the roots and in the soil itself. The plant gets uh, biostimulators, uh, better absorptions of the nutrients, stronger root structure, and of course, a healthier and tastier crops. Tastier crops, this is uh, what our customers say. They say that the, the crop looks better and actually tastes better. And of course, when you have a healthier plant, then it's less sick, then you need to re, uh, re, uh, use less pesticides. And that's actually also good. So the, in summary of the, uh, the, bio, the bio value for the environment, the biofertilizer reduces contamination of the pollution. As we said, from the soil, all the extra chemical fertilizer that leaches into the, our waters um, and the water leaching of chemicals, as we said, of the chemical and manure. Uh, also, <clears throat> excess of, uh, if it's farmers, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, cow manure, pig manure, uh, even human uh, goes into the watershed and makes it uh, very problematic for drinking, uh, contaminates it actually. And of course, air contamination of methane and N2O that is a very big and strong uh, greenhouse gas. This way, by uh, implementing uh, the Hombaga system, it provides an endless value chain. As we said, first for the soil, uh, conservation of the soil, for the plants and crops, more robust plants, better yield. For the farmer, of course, reduce cost and improve resilience of the crop uh, and himself. Again, it's also the, uh, improve the resilience from, from what we said, the geopolitical impact on the cost of energy and the cost of the fertilizer or the cost of energy of cooking. Uh, and heating, and of course for the environment, a more sustainable waste management and minimizing the contamination and pollution. How do we apply it? How do we apply this biofertilizer? So like us, uh, we like to eat a few times a day. Also actually the plant likes to eat a few times a day. So in the biofertilizer, uh, because you put in waste every day, then biofertilizer comes out every day. So you can apply through the existing irrigation system that you have, like a drip irrigation system or other types of irrigation system in a daily matter. Um, ideal absorption methods are through the soil and also through the leaves. Also, uh, you can spray it on the leaves and the leaves can absorb also uh, the nutrients. Here's some case studies that uh, we have. We call it from uh, 
from south of Israel where they grow cucumbers. So this is from cucumber to cucumber, uh, closing the cycle at the farm level. So here we have uh, Edward, a farmer of mini cucumbers. In Israel, we like to eat tiny cucumbers. And when the cucumber is a little bigger, they actually throw it away. So they throw hundreds of kilograms of cucumbers a day, and it's a big problematic to the environment, but also uh, it's a loss of, of uh, it's a waste. So what we what he said he did, he bought systems and he inputted the cucumbers into the biogas system. This way, first he saved one thousand two hundred dollars this year on cooking gas for his workers, and he, <clears throat> the liquid fertilizer. He recycles again and inputs it into uh, his, uh, with the chemical fertilizer through the irrigation or let's call it fertigation. And this way he saved this year $3,000. It's a virtual circle. Yes. So from cucumber to cucumber. Mm -hmm. Here we can see like a, a little summary of a field test that we, that we did there uh one uh, the black one uh, black line is a chemical fertilizer was uh, 20 percent of the biofertilizer uh with the chemical fertilizer and we can see that uh, uh within the date when we applied the biofertilizer and we can see that in the end uh we actually get more production uh, uh, when we apply the biofertilizer combination and, and this is coming again and again. We see it already a, a few times, this results. Not only in Israel, we see it, of course, across the world. This is another case study, very interesting one in Ecuador of a uh, of, uh, production area, a company that produces uh, 150,000 roses a day. Uh, most of it is sold uh, to Europe. And for this company to sell to Europe, uh, they had to show sustainable agriculture and production standards. So they decided to actually use home biogas system for their, uh, in, their, in their farm. And uh, what they did actually, they uh, used the liquid fertilizer. You can see it here. You can see it here on the right side on the top, you see the IBC tank is full of, full of liquid fertilizer. Right. They apply it, part of the composting of the uh, clips of the roses. And what I can tell you is that when, when I went to visit there, the farmer said that the roses, uh, they have to apply this biofertilizer to the roses and the compost to the roses because the roses don't, uh, if they give more chemical fertilizer, it will not help anything. They have to give to the roses the compost and the biofertilizer to help the roses absorb uh, the macronutrients and the chemical fertilizer to be to grow better. And now we can see how it's actually applied in the field, in the make, making compost. So you can see the, they're spraying inside the bar fertilizer as part of production of the compost. So they take all the rose all clips right. and they produce back the compost and they got give this compost back again into the roses. So this is also a circular economy yeah thank you <laughs> i have a question for you because uh, we spoke of biofertilizer so far but um uh, one more lead that researchers are uh, exploring is also like to push a bit forward the recovering of nutrients from wastewaters so do you think that might also be a promising solution or not Could you we repeat the question? We couldn't hear you. Yeah, exactly. That was a technical problem. No, I was saying that we, we spoke of biofertilizers so far, but one more lead that uh, researchers are exploring is like the recovering of uh, nutrients from wastewater. So do you also think that might be a possible and promising lead or not? Look, in wastewater, uh, like in, wa in, in wastewater, uh, as we said, we, we also input into our system animal waste, animal manure. It's pretty close to our feces, uh, and we see very good results. Uh, also, in our urine, we have a lot, a lot of nitrogen. Uh, so that's also a good resource. So I'm sure 
that in wastewater, there's a lot, a lot of nutrients uh, that can be reused uh, if it goes in a well, you know. Over treatment, yeah. Yes, in a well-treated mm -hmm. way. But there's a lot of nutrients that we can recover from our wastewater. But there is less nutrients because we already ate all of the nutrients. So sure. Yeah. We use the nutrients for our self-being. <laughs> So uh, I think that what you just showed us opened up a uh, new perspective for everybody. I wish we could keep going on discussing because it's a very interesting topic, but uh, my my watch recalls me that it's 3.57 p.m. Central European time. It means we barely have still three minutes, uh, but before saying goodbye to all of you, uh, to you panelists and to all of those who are behind their computers, I'd like to remind you all that this webinar will soon be available on the Household Projects YouTube page, where you can also find the past episodes on uh, energy and, and, and water. And I'm also sure that for those who might want to uh, address some uh, private question to Julia and Yahir, they'll be glad to answer them. So I, I invite, every, invite everybody to drop them a message at their personal email address, which are luckily quite easy. So it's just julia at uh, homebiogas.com and yair at homebiogas.com. Am I right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so this webinar is now almost over, but please don't leave yet because the news about the household project are not. Not at all indeed, because our agenda is still quite dense. So take out your pen and save the dates. On April 18th, we'll have a further webinar hosted by BuildUp aimed at shedding the light on the experiences of some of the household project uh, so-called follower buildings with the participation moreover of the European Commission which will outline its proposal for to foster a more circular approach in the housing sector and then on april the 26th the much awaited so-called household final event so basically aimed at making a point on the achievement of the project and at looking ahead it means that if the project comes to an end it will be the chance from 2 30 pm to 5 pm central european time to understand what will be next after the household project and what will be its legacy for the future and last but not least some more news informal videos will also be soon released but all this was just a teaser so to discover more and not to miss further updates i invite you all to register and follow linkedin's page of both the household project and the icons innovation strategies not to miss anything anything so my uh, request is to save the date stay tuned and time has come to say a big thank you to julia thanks a lot thank yair you. thank you thank and you to everybody. all of those who followed we us all have a great spring <laughs> and beautiful exactly. uh, holidays to people that have holidays <laughs> we thank you a lot for all the inspiring solution that you showed us today and it's perfectly 4, 4 p.m so we set everybody free and i hope we'll all be more inspired and circular after this debate thank you thank you Diogo, thank you. to you too and to icons and to the household project and to everyone who participated Thanks to everybody. Save the dates, April 18th and April 26th. Bye-bye. Thank you.